victory, 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 victory. <laughs> For angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Hamanda ata ata raka te de baka sanda ata ango osa tata rike banda ata rike didi asha ta. For angels have even just been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Oh, Africa. Africa. Right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're That's coming where angels here. are from? In the name of yeah. Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. <laughs> They're coming here from Africa, from South America. Angelic forces, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement. Fika hata anda ata ora bata rata anda eke eke manda rasata. For I hear the sound of victory. 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 The guy walking behind her for me. Yeah. That's just, that's comic timing that is beyond. Well, uh, there you go. You, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, from Africa, from South America, democracy is coming to the USA. Well, here we are. Uh, it's uh, now uh, a full two days after, uh, like two days, one day. I don't know. I mean, I just, uh, we're all uh, in the sober it's, light well, of day. I mean, in a real sense, it's still election day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I kind of think it will always be election day from here on out. Like, because, you know, el the election day promised for think of people, I think subconsciously, a relief from this tension, this building tension that they have. There's some sort of catharsis, but that will never come. So, I mean, technically, I think that means Election Day is eternal. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, now, now that I'm, you know, in the sober light of day, and I mean that, that like, I am sober now, uh, looking at what's happened, what do we always say, boys? The funniest and stupidest outcome is the one to bet on. As and boom, what did we get? We as, did it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> as it stands now, you know, when we signed off on midnight on uh, the election stream, uh, I, I was I was fairly convinced that, that that Biden had fucking blown it again. Oh, yeah. I, I was just like, this is about I think what we saw here is that it was like 2008 turnout with 2016 margins. But, what? You know, oh no! But I thought when more people voted, it helped Democrats. And you know, like, but like, as it stands now, it's like it's it is going to come down to like, what is it like? Uh, they're current. They're still counting votes in Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, and they've called it for Arizona, Wisconsin, and Michigan. I think, or like, it's it's being contested. But I mean, we'll get into all this. But like, it, it would it would seem that when the ballots are counted at the end of the day, Joe Biden will eke out a very narrow win in the Electoral College and expand the 2016 popular vote by, you know, four or five million total. But uh, I just I really I really want to begin today's show with uh, with this bit of news. And I think this really sums up everything. Uh, this comes from The New York Times, quote, Mr. Kushner was making calls looking for what he described as a James Baker like figure who could lead the legal effort <laughs> to dispute the tabulations in different states. And like that really says it all. If you're on Team Trump right here that they're like, uh, find me. A, it, 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 do we have a James Baker? And instead of yes, just calling like, James Baker, <laughs> if this is literally this is junior soprano ship this is Hitler asking where his three other divisions are in the Fuhrer bunker in 1945. James Baker isn't there for you anymore. James Baker is, I don't know, he's... Uh, uh, he's still alive. Mo he's contacting Moloch on his family's office computer. He's just enjoying the fruits of his labor. James Baker is not there for you. Do you think Poppy Bush would get caught with his pants down with no plan to steal the election and go, Oh, uh, find me a baker. They're sending in. They're sending in fucking Gargamel, Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> to waddle into the white, to waddle into the Pennsylvania Supreme Court with his hand down his pants. Go, Your Majesty, <laughs> I, I declare victory. Kushner is trying to. Kushner is trying to steal this election with the privileged nervousness of him. How I imagine him buying drugs is. <laughs> hey, um, do you, do you got the stuff? <laughs> To, yeah, to steal he's, the election, he, he's calling. He's calling up like a. He, he's calling up. Uh, yeah, I got. I got. The, I got. I got the money. Uh, it's right. It's right here. Let me count it. 
he's calling up uh he's calling up like uh, Republican operatives in, in in Pennsylvania just saying um yeah I'm looking for those those Barry White records and maybe uh Al Green do you have those hey what do you twilight? like to uh do you like to party <laughs> what 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 people who are really worried about a coup happening again or even honestly Bush v Gore two happening again is to forget that the spots that were filled uh, 30 years ago, uh, 20 years ago in the Republican Party apparatus by guys like James Baker, these deep state fucking reptiles who slithered through the rat, uh, the how, howls, howls of power for their entire lives are now filled with guys who like run CBD pancake batter companies that got <laughs> fucking hired up to like just help push some more fucking tin with the multi-level marketing schemes that they're trying to sell everybody else at the fucking administration. They're just a bunch of fails. They're, they're, they're the next generation. They're the yeah. fucking huckster fail kids. James Baker and his cadre, they came over on the Mayflower and they were bred for centuries to perform the most evil acts that lasted for the longest time. They were, they were bred to, at their coming of age, jack off in a coffin in front of each other to seal this bond, to steal Geronimo's skeleton, <laughs> to perform evil <laughs> cult rituals, and they succeeded. We're talking about the LeBron of the deep state, George H.W. Bush, these all-time great players. Uh, and now we have a bunch of guys who are all kicked out of Navy SEALs training for bringing their bongs. <laughs> you know, James Baker was great, but he never had to play against Henry Clay. <laughs> <laughs> As as uh, this would have never happened to Poppy. Felix, as as, uh, as Rick Pitino once said when he was coaching the Celtics, uh, Kevin McHale was not walking through that door. Robert Parrish <laughs> is not walking through that door. <laughs> this is like going from the Bush 2000 team. It's like going from the 90s Knicks, an All Star physical team, uh, or the Pistons. Sorry. The 90s oh. Pistons. Oh, I was hoping, uh, hoping you are talking about. <laughs> I hope you're talking about Anthony Mason, your face Mason. <laughs> Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing. Yeah. They got to the finals, to, folks. They got to the finals. We are now, we are now dealing with the 90s Clippers. <laughs> and uh, what better team? It's the 90s Clippers ver versus the Washington Generals. And I think the Generals <laughs> the won. The Generals were winning. Barely. The Generals just barely won. Yeah. Which is real. Which but is really guys, funny. No, no. I, yeah, sure. It does look like the cadre of, of operators at the top of the Trump uh, administration doesn't seem to have the wherewithal to coordinate anything like a a, a large scale vote theft in, in broad daylight, like the previous generation did. But you're forgetting that the president is calling upon his army of supporters to form uh, shock troops to overturn the results themselves. That's the real danger. How's that? I, I I I haven't heard too much today. Uh, I'm assuming that several of the uh, of the voting places have been invested by uh, by siege engines <laughs> and are about to have all of uh, the Biden votes just incinerated in a giant auto de fe. That's what uh, I'm yeah. assuming is going on. The uh, Reno and Las Vegas counties in in Nevada, there uh, the trebuchets have been have been moved in there. I mean, as best I can tell right now, I mean, it seems like the uh, the, the line out of uh, out of out of Team Trump is that uh, we should stop the counting of ballots in some states but continue them in others mm -hmm. yeah that i mean the, is that basically it? the ones yeah the stop in the ones where he's up and keep counting in the ones where he's down that's pretty simple uh and that's the thing that makes it almost impossible to imagine a bush v gore thing because yeah. bush v gore came down to one state and it was a binary thing that they'd vote counted the votes and bush was up if they kept counting he could only lose so stop counting here he's got four fucking plates in the air spitting in different directions and there's no way to have like a coordinated even argument i mean but like the, the, but like what, what i mean by the, the funniest and stupid outcome is that like i mean obviously in anything that's like close to a fair accounting of these votes biden will be the winner in the electoral college and, and Pro probably. Least, probably 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 i mean like that but but i i do love the idea that like the georgia secretary of state is like stealing votes for the democratic party yeah that's kind of wild but like I feel like uh, I, you, I think I, I think you had like the best the best analogy here that like that, that really struck me. It's just like you know in in the corridors of power in like the the elite conservative like right wing circles like the 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 real the real players they're all sitting around in like the the little room off out outside the court before they're sentencing, and then like they're going around they're like what do you, what do you think about Trump? He's a, he's a marine, solid. 
Then they just go around the table and then they get to Remo Gaggi, Sheldon Adelson, and Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> yeah. And they just go, why take a chance? Why take a chance? Yeah, that's what's happening. Uh... Marino, uh, Frank Vincent in Casino, that is Mike Pence. He has to report <laughs> back to the bosses and go, I don't know. It's just what I heard. I just what I, I heard. I, I, I fucking Jared on the case. I didn't hear nothing about that. <laughs> yeah. Trump is Pesci, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like um, you trust Trump assumed that if they needed to, he could do a trust fall and all these people who are surrounding themselves with him. Because in his mind, well, of course they, they're helping me because I'm so great. Uh, <laughs> we're going to catch him. And instead, they just fucking let him drop. I mean, if you are Remo Gaggi, if you're the remaining Coke, you're Sheldon Adelson, you're uh, any of these guys, why take a chance? Why this take is a chance? this is 2022 is going to be a bloodbath for you. Oh God, they're gonna fucking they're gonna eat. They're gonna get the house back. They're gonna get a nice oh the Senate seats mall man to me. They're gonna be falling off the phone. We we could probably see Clay Higgins become a senator. <laughs> Hell yes! I mean, I hope so. I do too. I mean, we I uh, love uh, him. I mean, he's my favorite one of all of them. <laughs> it's the best. You gonna get that root going? Oh yeah, you get that with democracy. I love on. it. I love it when Clay. I love it when Clay Higgins talks in like Book of Revelations terms. Yep, yep. And he, I have seen the spherical angel come down and say, "Clay, you must define this democracy." His wife is, has the gift of prophetic dreams. It's true. I love him. <laughs> He's like the angel Gabriel came down to me. He said, "Boy, you put me up. You putting two man crotes in that uh, etouffee boy." I mean, I, I killed the beast of the sea and I put him into my stew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, like, like I said, like it, it, nothing has been called yet. I mean, like you know, anything can happen. Like there, there's a chance that you know, like Trump may still eke it out. Who knows? But I think sure. it's te- I think it's telling that like Mitch McConnell said yesterday that um. Counting ballots is not the same as like people continuing to vote. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like he, I mean, he's put his marker down on that. And like I said, like if you're Mitch McConnell, if you're if you're the if you're Sheldon Adelson, if you're the if you're the last Koch brother, it doesn't really matter to you because like we said it before, they got Amy Coney Barrett on they the Supreme Court. Got everything they wanted. The Democrats have like a lo- like they've lost ground in the House of Representatives. They didn't take back the Senate, and it's just <laughs> like Jesus Christ. It, it's just like for, <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I want to. I want to. As long as we're talking about the Senate, I got to bring this up because th- this is this is incredible. Here, I'm just going to run down the list here. South Carolina, Jamie Harrison raised 108 million dollars, lost to Lindsey Graham by like 10 point, 11 points. Amy McGrath raised 90 million dollars, lost to Mitch McConnell. Sarah Gideon raised 69.5 million dollars, lost to Susan Collins. And in uh, Texas, Mary Hager raised 24 million dollars and lost to John Cornyn. All of those double digit blowouts. Yep, double man. digits. Except yeah, you except know, Gideon. Double digits also in Montana, in Kansas. These were also targeted races in Mississippi. A lot of mo- millions of dollars went into these races as well. Seth but Seth Iowa. Bullock, one of our yeah, Seth Bullock, one of our favorite characters, lost. Yeah. Just like the sheriff's race. It's sad. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the word grifter gets thrown around a lot. Uh, but I would say that one literal example would be all of the consultants who raked in this money because they were promising a thing to people that they were going to potentially not not, not win but they were going to put up a fight and they were going to use that money to press a potential position to to defeat these republicans and it's not like they it's i'm sorry there was never it's not like oh look we thought we had a chance maybe in some vague sense but what really matters is it doesn't fucking matter if they won or not because their jobs are not contingent on it. And more importantly, uh, th- what they do with the money basically ensures that they're not going to accomplish anything because they just fucking mo- put more TV ads on. They just, just, it's a circle jerk. Of, it's a circular movement of the money. It's the circle from, jerk from, of life. It's the circle jerk of life from these, from these anxious liberal uh, donors to this cadre who then just give it to people who work in media in the states where they fucking drop all this money. And then everybody just buys a second fucking house. And none of, and at no point is any of this engaging voters who would determine the outcome. You're just it's a red state. You get this relatively predictable electorate, especially during a presidential year. And it doesn't matter which ads they see; they're already fucking determined. And then they go and vote, and you get the exact same result. I mean, you were always going to get. You know, it can't it can't be uh, overstated how much of an upset this was in Maine. Sarah Gideon led in, I believe, every single poll for the past. Oh yeah, months. no, that looked solid. And then went down to defeat Democrats 
who were favored to win the Senate, it must be reminded three days ago, uh, almost lost seats on Tuesday. Amazing. Uh, in Minnesota, uh, Tina Smith won re-election by a little over 5%. That race was not supposed to be close. Jesus. And in Jesus. Michigan, Gary Peters won re-election by uh, less than a perc- uh, a little over a percentage point. Woo. In, uh, in Minnesota, by the way, uh, they had a pretty good operation for Democrats this year compared mm-hmm. to 2016. It was not close. It was a seven-point race. They called it pretty early in the night compared to the other Great Lakes states. But that means Smith lagged two points behind Biden. Yeah, not brutal. good. The, the Democrats, uh, uh, they've only called two Senate races for the Democrats, two pickups for the Democrats. And keep in mind, they had targeted over 10 seats this cycle. Uh, I mean, and that's the Senate. Uh, House of Representatives, they, uh, they, they still have Slaughter. the majority, but... Uh, I mean, they, they, their advantage has shrunk significantly. And I, what I learned this morning is that the, the Democratic super PAC that was in charge of the House races was being led by Robbie Mook. I want to, I, I, I want to, <laughs> when you see, when you see no one go down for this, I want you to keep in mind, keep this in mind. The downfall of the Republican Revolution Republicans of 94 was them only picking up 10 seats in 98. <laughs> Oh, you're going to see fucking Robbie Mook for the rest of your life. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi is probably going to stay on as speaker. Oh, for, no, she said she will. And who the hell is yeah. going to go against her? Who, 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 who will oppose Ryan? me? <laughs> who can yeah. oppose me? Republicans oh have flipped at least eight Democrat held house seats, including <laughs> that including that bald fucker, Max Rowe. Man, yeah, the, the oh, man lips. Oh, the man oh. He lose. He was so epic. Hey, I'm over here. I'm walking. I don't like that Blast Last Matter so much. Shame, but I also don't like the friggin' Trump. Oh, man. Fucking loser. Nicole, loser. Malata- Nicole Malatakis wants you to think she's walking here. But let's look at the facts. <laughs> Remember when he tried to, like, he, like, tried to run a Twitter campaign. He tried to, like, get retweets from like wedding crashers conservatives by being epic about bill de blasio and it's like bill de bungalow lives he got reelected. you didn't baldy <laughs> <laughs> go get a fucking shine box for your fucking head <laughs> yeah build a bungalow build build a bungalow may be a shitty mayor and the What's most there, cocked man bro? in america oh, in the world 100 percent. but he Sh- did what you could not and he was reelected. <laughs> Uh, check this out. Minimum rows. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I mean, like the other thing is like the the, the the turnout in this election was quite high, quite high. But it did not really. <laughs> it was it was in your <laughs> precinct, Will. <laughs> <laughs> and then, OK, we want to OK, we want to talk about grifters. Here's here's another really funny stat from this uh, election. Think about the amount of money the Lincoln Project hoovered up from gullible Democrats. <laughs> the, okay, the percentage of registered Republicans who voted for Trump this election r- rose by three points. Oh, dude. not a single Republican vo- like broke like broke ranks. This is I asked this on Twitter. If you, unlike me, got better than a C in pre-calc. Can you make the mathematical formula that proves my suspicion? If the Lincoln Project, if those guys had never left the Republican Party and had worked for them this election, Trump w- and the Republicans would have done worse. Yes. I mean, I'm just going to say that, yes. Either that or this whole thing was an incredibly impressive and elaborate uh, uh, double agent inside job style Ocean's Eleven infiltration program. Because look at what they pulled off. They... Took, hoovered up tons of money that could have gone to other candidates and other places more that could have been more effectively used for the campaign. They used it to get epic for, with themselves and ingratiate themselves with the national media. And cre- now they're going to create a fucking media brand like crooked media style. And then epic, it, epic. Just, just think of like the, the, the fucking end of usual suspects drop the mu- coffee mug reveal when like if Biden does try to drag out some limp dick fucking public option a year from now, they're running ads against it with oh, the yeah. money that the Democratic voters gave them. Oh, it is. They got exactly exactly what they, what they wanted. And I, and, and I think Steve Schmidt, if Matt Sir is correct, Steve Schmidt, he sort of he accidentally revealed the bit. He revealed the scam because he was arguing with some Daily Caller buffoon, and he went. I ran the Alito and Roberts confirmation. What the <laughs> fuck have you ever done? And it's like, hmm, interesting thing to bring up now. <laughs> I'm sure he's horrified by by uh, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh and Amy Coney uh, Bryant. Yeah. yeah. 
Hmm. Well, speaking of Brian, thing. speaking of Brian, it is funny that the strategy was we're not going to shut down the Senate for this thing. We don't want to look like obstructionists. We're just going to put her on the court, and then once we take back the Senate, we're going to figure it all out. Yeah, yep. it was going to be smooth sailing. We got we're we're going to get the fil- get rid of the filibuster, and we're going to do some court packing. That's going to be great. And you know, I mean, as far as like the 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 court and the Senate goes, I mean, like let's not forget that a major one of the major arguments proffered for like why Joe Biden had to be the nominee was to 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 help the down ballot Senate races and and win states like North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, and, that was the idea. Yeah. Like, get widen the tent, get all those abridged Republicans, and they're going to vote Democrat down the line and bring and I, a, they bring common sense reform to Washington. And we have to ask. What is the point of Joe Biden, the nominee and the Joe Biden project, if he can't win North Carolina? Wasn't that the whole point was to turn North Carolina into yeah. Virginia? Yep, exactly. It's like, the, uh, fuck, fuck the Rust Belt. We're going hard on the Sun Belt. And that means we can give up uh, Wisconsin and even Michigan and Pennsylvania because we're going to we've got Virginia now is on lock. We, we flip New, North Carolina. Similarly, that means that Arizona falls. And joins Colorado, and you've essentially lost nothing, and you don't have to worry about this dumb question every four years of how do we apply to work, appeal to working class people? Because now you no longer have that uh, as a part of your general uh, uh, coalition. Well, looks like you're stuck. Yeah, the Great Lakes, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck in four years, cocksucker. <laughs> they have. It's like you think. It's like you have turned these, which you, like the swing states. They used to be different. Once that concept mm-hmm. like solidified immediately, now states that were taken for granted and in fact necessary to get any Democrat plausibly to two two seventy are now just coin flips. Oh man! But don't well, worry, <laughs> Texas is gonna fall any day now. Oh yeah, you you guys are gonna get Texas. It's gonna happen. And I know people North are screaming Carolina. at us. You thought they might get Texas. It's like because. That's what the entire media apparatus that these guys are part and parcel of has been fucking putting down our throats for the last four years. And I basically said, this is the only reality I know. Maybe it's actually true. The only way I'll know is when the election happens. Well, now everyone who saw this has to know what is going on. Well, There's no more. We're not floating through quantum space between the elections wondering, like, what's going on? What do people think? What's going to work? What are, you know, why did people vote for Trump and how can we get him back? Well, now we're back to Earth. And we fucking know what didn't work. And it was doubling down on Hillary. Okay. Well, I mean, in that vein, though, and as long as we're talking about, like, you know, finally, you know, seeing seeing reality rather than the various mirages that are created by polling and the media and all, narratives and you know, online, blah, 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 whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I mean, it's hard to imagine anyone doing worse than Joe Biden in this election. Because, you know, let's be clear. If it wasn't for COVID, like, this would have been a blowout victory for yes. Trump. Yeah. It would have been, oh, yes. it would have been a, like, a, like it would not have been close at all. Oh, even, no. Yeah. Even, with, even, even with them destroying the post office and just like out, just shoving ballots into a fucking bonfire or whatever. I mean, like, yeah, it would have been it wouldn't have been close at all. But it, so it's hard to imagine anyone doing worse than Joe Biden. But like, you know, knowing what we know now is the idea that Bernie would have won still credible. I mean, I say I, like, yeah. I, I'll say it as a troll or as like a sort of a, a rallying call for what I believe in. But. I mean, looking at the reality of the American electorate in this past election, like I, I don't know if it's the case that like it, I, you can confidently say that Bernie would have absolutely won this election. We don't know because it's never going to happen. Yeah, but I, that I, is very true. I mean, like I, we can't get a general election. The, the Democratic Party cannot produce a general election candidate like Bernie Sanders. I think Bernie loses Florida, probably loses Texas. I think he very easily wins every state biden got i think hey, he'd probably have a better chance in texas uh i i think i think he could win i think he could win somewhere in the neighborhood of uh 300 evs but i think he wins pennsylvania i think pennsylvania is over fairly quick for bernie uh the other thing though that you have to take into account with bernie what would the democrats and mike bloomberg do yeah mm-hmm. and the media in general like we so like we had b- before Bernie. We had like the 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 fucking the 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 horrible moment of like in the pit of your stomach. Before that was when Corbin ate shit because that was the dream one on one, and the media had this you know and cr- created a campaign that had nothing to do with the material issues that we were all hoping could become put it back on the agenda in the Western democracies, and 
It didn't fucking matter. People voted on shit like Brexit because I think more than anything, nobody thought that any of the stuff Corbin was talking about was ever going to actually happen. It was just more bullshit. And that's in a country where they have a functioning parliamentary system where a majority of if a, if a party can form a majority government, they can fucking change whatever they really want. In our system, I think Bernie runs for president. I think that the media coalesces against him. You might see a Bloomberg third party candidacy. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that the uh, degree to which like white suburbanites, the ones who did go for him, go for Biden, but didn't go for down ticket Dems, which is, of course, the hilarious punchline to all of that. Uh, they go for Trump or maybe Bloomberg to some percentage or another. And then it's like, well, yes, but Bernie will do, would have done way better among uh, young people and Latinos, certainly, uh, and working class people in general. And the thing is, yes, I think he would have. I think it probably would have been enough, especially since on issues like COVID, he would have had an actual uh, contrasting plan <laughs> that the Biden absolutely did not. Uh, but the question is, like, what do people who are just like coming into the scene? What are they gonna take? What are they gonna do with all that big, big vision stuff? And like, Bernie, do, do, do casual American uh, electoral participants hear Medicare for all and not just drown, immediately discount it as a real live possibility? And the thing is, I don't know that, but I wonder. One thing that really, really hurt Corbin is if you look at the difference between 2017 and 2019. The thing that killed him more than anything, it wasn't anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, they never thought that could make him lose the election. It was something to weigh him down in his own party. Very cynically put forth, it was part of a broader theme that Corbyn was an enemy of Britain and Britain's allies. It was less of a big deal than a lot of other things, but it did hamper him within his own movement. Even though, in the end, of the, at the end of the day, a lot of the people who cried about it don't really fucking care about it. What really hurt him were the Remainers. Making Corbyn say that he wanted a second re referendum fucking murdered him in areas he carried two years before and i think bernie being the team player that he is he runs into problems like that democrats basically force him to pick up very unpopular yeah. wedge issues they go oh what what bernie you don't want to do gun confiscation yep what oh my god and they can they there's an no reparations media, bernie they could use an entire media apparatus to just beat him down and force him to, and he would do it. He's yeah. a team player. He's a cuck. He's not like, uh, we love Bernie. We love Bernie. We loved Bernie. We were with him 100%. But part of knowing Bernie and loving Bernie is knowing that he's a cuck. I'm uh, sorry. I believe Bernie would have won. I have two points here. One is that Bernie would have articulated a concrete and comprehensive new direction for the country where the vast majority of people believe we are going, we are on the wrong track. We are going in the wrong direction. They're unsatisfied with the current leadership. Uh, Bernie, that's because Bernie has a coherent and expressible worldview in a way that Biden and Harris simply do not. Uh, my other point is I believe if Bernie Sanders had been the nominee that Donald Trump would not have improved his standing among Latino voters over 2016. I think Bernie, I think Donald Trump would not have doubled his support among black women over 2016. I think that Donald Trump, if Bernie had been the nominee, Donald Trump would not have gotten the highest share of non-white voters that any Republican candidate has gotten since Richard Nixon in 1960. The most racist American president ever. The one whose racism was yeah. the most central feature of his presidency, according to vast swaths of the media. Amazing. I'm I mean, yeah, like that, that outcome about him receiving a larger share of a, the non-white vote in a presidential election since Richard Nixon is it just it it, it baffles. I mean, because, like, you know, it's not, he's not going to get anywhere near a majority. But I mean, it still it goes against every single thing that like the media has like uh, pr programmed it, like or, it, their beliefs about like how American voters demographically are supposed to behave. It, it destroys the only uh, argument for the Democratic Party as a viable concern for, like, the aspirations of humanity going forward. Like, if you ask any Democrat, like, what's going on with this? Like, look, you're saying this is the best we can do, this, like, gridlock forever, then how the hell are we ever going to address stuff like climate change realistically? And they say, well, give it time. The country is getting more brown. 
we're browning, we're demographically changing. And those young voters and those minority voters, they're going to see the horrible racist GOP and they're going to say, no, thank you, sir. But Don't open think, the oven. Don't open yeah. the oven. You're letting the heat out. It's browning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what we're seeing is that like uh, the, those racial categories that for liberals are becoming incredibly brittle and, 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 uh, and defined like you know they're they're into 23 and me shit they're into like blood quantum stuff about like standpoint really boiling down not to like experience of one's life you know like day to day but literally like you're fucking 23 and me but you're never going to be able like it's never going to people say well, what about you know black people black people are the fucking thing that all of these concepts are defined around they're the other they're the internal other inherently but among but but a lot of liberals assumed a lot of democrats assume that people uh, think that, that that minorities think about race the way that they do. Uh, and the thing is, we know for a fact they don't. Being a Latino is way more of a varied, lived American experience than being a black person is. And as a result, racism is not processed as an issue, as a, like a dividing line of and a, defi a defining element of one's politics the way that, that it is for black people. And that's true for any other minority. And that means that your assumption that the it, that the clear horrible uh, racism and it is according to the definitions of like so, civil discourse it's racism will inherently pull them together in like a, 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 they'll recognize the threat to themselves but it's like if you don't think about yourself in those terms that racism doesn't bite the way that these white people assume it must and that means that they're like yeah well racism racism like kids in cages like they're not my fucking kids. What are you talking about? Like, I'm a Mexican-American whose family's been here since the 19th century. What the fuck do you think I care about some fucking Central American speaking an Indian dialect who I don't want living in my fucking neighborhood? And they just cannot. And the thing is, if that's true, then the Democrats will never be able to assemble a dominant coalition, like a, a New Deal-style coalition, to take over. They cannot because they're, they have said that the deadlock we have is... Is it cannot be resolved through politics. We have to always tack to the middle. We can't change the electorate. So demographics will change the uh, math. And we know now, I think, we have the 20 years of data now that that's not going to happen, which means the Democrats cannot save us. Like, in any sense, even in, like, the compromise sorkin like, muddle-through sense, like, they are as apocalyptically, apocalyptically accelerationist a political party as the Republicans are. If you want to know how liberals are taking this, uh, I saw one very respected liberal blogger uh, explain the huge shift from Clinton votes in 2016 to Trump votes in 2020, almost by a two to one margin in uh, some lower, some uh, more southern counties in Texas that were heavily Latino, talking 90 percent, as a desire for Caudillism. People who yes. have been Americans since like 1870 <laughs> who haven't been ruled by a Cadillo for like 160 fucking years. They want Cadillo. This is this is the end result of this. This yep. is the end result Race of this. This is they really can't caucus with Richard Spencer. Yep. If, if if these people don't vote your way, they have a genetic desire to return to their memory of Santa Ana. <laughs> like, you are mentally ill beyond repair. We can do nothing for you. I wish you good luck. I wish you good luck. Uh, I, I, you know, in, in, in thinking about this, like the, the Latino vote, I mean, it was like clearly in, in Florida, that really killed Biden. You know, I mean, a lot of people are blaming it on the socialism, you know, and like tying uh, Biden and the Democratic Party to fidel castro or maduro or shit like that because you know like i mean the the first really big result of the night and one that was the really the the real indicator for how things were going to go on tuesday was the miami dade county results oh yeah that, that, that was a real that, canary that biden won i mean he won it by nine points but like he he needed to win it by 20 or 30 points like hillary clinton did or like i mean she didn't win florida either but like i mean that was I mean, like, that was an indicator. And, you know, I mean, and it's also an indicator of, like, this idea that, like, the Latino vote out there is any, anything like a comprehensive thing is, is ludicrous. But then again, in Florida, they just passed a minimum wage fucking raise. And, and, like, and then there was a similar, what was it? They are reenfranchising felons on the, in the last election while the state continues to go red. And then, like, similarly, all over the country, like, they're just they're legalizing weed everywhere. And. <laughs> 
I mean, they legalized weed in New Jersey, in Montana. They legalized psilocybin. Hey, I'm smoking here. <laughs> they legalized psilocybin in D.C. And it's like, well, that's good. It's all we have left. We're basically. going to New Jersey. <laughs> and we're going to Montana. <laughs> we're going to Oregon. And we're going to get Doritos. And we're going to get Mountain Dew. I mean, people talk about that in terms of how it's evidence of, like, there's a progressive desire. But honestly, to me, it feels like somebody, like, in a hospice hitting the fucking morphine button. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. we have no chance of anything being better. Give me drugs. Give me more options for narco narconization. I mean, it doesn't. It, it, it says something that, like, yeah, like, Biden w did, was stung by, like, a, a lack of enthusiasm among younger voters overall. And you're telling me like he can't even pretend to just be like, yeah, we're legalizing weed, man. Come on. We're, 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 we're smoking tie stick. No, brother. because that scares away their grandparents who he wants to vote for him in the fucking suburbs. Oh, by the way, by the way, really quick. Remember all those polls showing that you know, Biden was actually doing great with senior citizens? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Trump won senior citizens. <laughs> he was doing. I'll tell you this. I, this is my belief on the fucking how the polls are so wrong. Because like we nobody the polls obviously were fucked in 2016 and people said, well, why? No one really knew. And now this is one thing we have now more data. And to me, I'm I'm ready to call it as Dave Wasserman to say I've seen enough. Is that <laughs> at this point a poll is not a poll of voters? It's not a poll of likely voters or registered voters or any of those screens. It is a poll who people of people who answer the phone and give answers to a pollster, and that is not the electorate. And they could try to make fix that and like have their model, but that's the that that is in my opinion a distinction between people that shouldn't exist like in a poll mm -hmm. sampling like th you're just supposed to assume that this is like a cross section i don't think it is yeah. I, especially with this big bump in it turnout i think a lot of people because it's a crisis election and it's so po like things are bad and they see all the day on tv hey there's an election maybe the bad things can go away uh that they're not picking up the goddamn phone to talk to you they haven't thought about it. They don't really give a shit. V t talking to a pollster is like voting. It's like, hey, look at me. I'm participating in the Democratic pageantry. Mm -hmm. And if you're bringing in a big bunch of people who have not assimilated that civic ethic around voting, they're not going to pick up the phone for a number they don't recognize. And that means that these polls will always be systemically uh, 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 mutated. It's just the polls are cucked. The it's polls are literally cucked because only cucks answer polls. I mean, only cucks answer their fucking phone when it's a number that's not saved in it. Yeah, I mean, you know what yeah. though? Like, I, I think I, th I, I think an, like a, an element of the of the cuckening is just like the absolute exponential proliferation of fucking like uh, like like robocalls and fucking people trying to scam you and get your social security number. I get calls from Chinese people like five times a week. Oh God, so many Chinese people. That's uh, that's me and my friends. Sorry, <laughs> the poll, you're saying so. You're saying what the polls actually are. The polls are polls of busy bodies. People yep. want to give you yeah. the poll, polls the are kind of people of, for whom polls are rudeness is a key issue. For the ones who do think that things like uh, uh like national honor matter, the sort they of people the who are, are up. on hold with their bank for an hour and they get that automated message saying, "Would you like to take a survey about your experience today?" And they say, oh, "I would." Indeed, yes. I would like to spend five more minutes on this call to give you a little piece of my mind. Uh, but that's it. But I mean, that's it. That's interesting. Also, in the context of the way that kind of social media has broken the brains of, I don't know, maybe half the population, while the other half lives in just kind of a like blissful ignorance of all the crap that goes on online. Like you have, the, the, maybe there is like a, a real distinction now between people who do want to share something. Or, or say, say what's on their mind, and people who are like, no, I don't have time. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. And those are going to be Trump I'm supporters. Not, I'm not. Those I'm not are going to be disproportionately pick. Trump supporters or, or in this Virgil, election. They don't need to fucking tell, tell a pollster what's on their mind because they're sharing their thoughts every fucking day on Facebook with other people who are fucking, you know, like uh, interested in what they have to say instead of some sort of like disembodied voice on the phone asking you details about, you know, the child tunnels. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want to try like, two, two other re results from last night out in uh, California. Uh, first, a little bit of good news. I, I don't think it's been officially announced yet, but it does look indeed like a girl, Nithya Raman, has won her Woo! race to be on the L.A. City Council, which is a good thing. But it's a bright spot. It? It's a bright spot, but uh, I'm talking like, like the, a massive, massive black hole. And I think what is truly probably the darkest and most nightmarish outcome of uh, Tuesday night's election is Prop 22 passing in California and passing fairly oh, yeah. easily after companies like Uber and Lyft spent $200 million 
on it. And, you know, I mean, like, this is, I think, like, it, this is really more than any other result from last night, a vision of, like, the future of what living in this country is going to be like. Just outright corporate rule. Just like, yep, and like, just like purchasing directly purchasing the electoral system, yeah. not bothering with the tedium yep. of going through uh, fucking electoral officials. And, you know, I, I just want to like the quote from The Washington Post real quickly. It says uh, uh, Anthony Fox, who was Obama's former transportation secretary, who now works for Lyft, of course, oh. uh, of course, <laughs> says oh, uh, of the pro- of what they refer to as the Prop 22 model can, quote, be replicated in and scaled in states across the U.S. And they'd like to work with. They'd like to work with labor to, quote, lock arms and figure this out. Mont- lock Ryan. arms and jump into the ocean together with fucking rocks in our pockets. Mont- and, like, send them to Monster Island. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I mean, like, like they are there. I mean, obviously, like, California has this this idiotic, like, a, a ballot measure system, which is, like, can't be replicated in many states across the country. But, like, they are looking for, like, federal legislation, the, the Prop 22 that will be federal, like a federal legislation to just lock in any corporation's ability to just not officially count people as employees. And think about this. Think about this. So we in America, because of the specific power of our medical lobby in the post-World War II and like the fact that we had like a kind of a a reactionary turn there uh, right after the in electoral politics, uh, you we refuse like the rest of the developed world to implement universal health care and decide instead decided, well, we'll it may have it a benefit of employment. And now we're reaching a point where unrestrained by any kind of uh, single payer system or, you know, a uh, uh, large scale buying power courtesy of a, of a government agency. Uh, we have the most expensive healthcare in the world and it's not going anywhere, but we have. And the thing about that is yes, it makes everyone's life miserable, but it also costs money for fucking employers and they don't like that. And so many people, especially in the Obama years thought, well, you know, those uh, these corporations, they have a, you. If you could leverage the the uh, self interest of corporations to not have to pay for health care, maybe you could get them on board with universal health care. And it's sort of like, nah, the better position from them, uh, profit wise, is to just get rid of the provision of health care through employment. Which means we've solved the problem of how too expensive health care is by just having it not be a thing people can afford at all. You don't get health care anymore. It's not a thing. That's not a part of life in America. Access to health care. That doesn't exist anymore. And now you've solved the problem from the point of view of that dreaded curve people are talking about. Also, I believe a, a Prop 15 in California was also defeated, which is best ah, I understand Jesus it. Jesus fucking Christ. How, <laughs> hard, how hard is that pitch? I guess I fucked up. How hard is that fucking pitch? I it's mean, it basically just like, says, like, can, can you raise property taxes slightly to fund on anything? On corporations? They yeah. even did the thing that all the liberals tell you you have to do. You can't do, do like, raise taxes on regular people because they get too freaked out about it. They don't understand that there's a benefit. This was literally corporate taxes for education and people were like no thank you and and, and the, other, the other really fun feature of prop 22 is that of course it's, it's written directly by uber and lyft so that now that yep. it's passed it you will it will take a seven eighths majority of the california legislature to change a single word or comma in the le- in, in prop 22 which essentially means it will be there forever it is it is it is it, it is Un, it has been removed from the sphere of like democratic, po- like like debate or possibility or like politics. It is now just unalloyed, unchallengeable corporate rule, and mm-hmm. this is this is the future. Like the, any, this is this is so much more indicative of, of where we are going as a country than anything to do with like Trump or Biden or the Republicans or the Democrats or or this demographic group or that demographic group. I mean, like, this is what politics is going to be in the future. Like you said, like, remove... Because here's the thing, like, our input and output in terms of votes, like, I mean, is also totally disconnected from politics at this point. Totally. I mean, like, mm-hmm. at this point, politics, especially at a national level, is absolutely no different than than watching sports and rooting for your team. It's sports ball for sports ball people. And you know, like like the the outcomes of like the Democrats winning or losing or like this, it's just like oh, it's just like the Super Bowl. It's mm-hmm. like did, did your you know at the end of the day, like uh, some kids in Haiti are going to get Trump, you know, uh, reelected T-shirts. <laughs> basically, I would go love to cop one of those. But I guess like you know, if we if we can allow ourselves to assume that the the results will play out how you know most people are expecting them to, with Biden eking out mm-hmm. a narrow electoral college victory and being inaugurated in january january 
I mean, this is this is a wonderful outcome for us personally on this show. I mean, I was really not looking forward to having to talk about Trump for another four years or try to try oh, to, no. just try to like, I don't know, just find some way to, I, I would, it's just, it's, it's, it would be a very bad outcome for a lot of reasons, but you know, for me personally, uh, it would be, and just continuing to do this show would be a bad one. But we were, I mean, this will obviously be some wish casting about how a Biden, the Biden Harris era will, what America will look like. And once again, Felix, I think you have it, exactly right i think you called it to a t that obviously politically not much will change i mean like coronavirus you think that that's going away or going to be handled any differently or corona like, ain't going away oh god yeah. can you imagine with biden president how they're going to be able to get people to take a goddamn vaccine <laughs> oh that's going to be great uh i mean um, he's got, like every time he goes in public somebody's going to try to citizens arrest him and they're going to get people <laughs> to take a vaccine yeah i mean Guys, you know, I'm going on a limb here. I don't think Bernie is going to be Secretary of Labor. And now, yeah, and, now with, <laughs> and now with the, like, the As Republicans. he shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't no, no, anyway, no, of course yeah. not. Of course not. But, um, you know, but with, you know, the Republicans in the Senate, like the, the idea that they're going to be able to do any of even like the completely ludicrous and inadequate half measures that they were like pretending to want to do on the campaign trail. Like that's out yeah. the fucking window. <laughs> that's out the fucking window. Yes, healthcare is still a human right though. <laughs> yeah. But like, like, you know, but, but, you know, there's more to just politics. We all got to live in this country and we all got to breathe the same air and watch the same TV shows. And Felix, you're exactly right. Tomorrow morning, every single cartoon on Netflix that's about depression and anxiety canceled. Entourage coming back. Hell yeah, baby. Let's have yes, some baby. fucking fun on television again. Yeah. No, we are. We are. We are done with the era of bad feeling. And yep. Sierra, good feelings back, baby. Sarah Cooper is currently being put in a car and driven out to a nice country home. <laughs> yeah. she, she, I, Sarah, 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 James Corden tried to kill himself. Come on. <laughs> it's the exact repeat of the Christopher scene. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, it's just, I mean, like, we're, we're, we're stuck now. And like, and like what I said, like, on, on Monday before the election, it's like, regardless of the outcome, it's going to be stupid and evil, but also funny. But it's just this thing right now, it's like, People who talk about like, you know, Trump really violently rending America's social fabric and like things, you know, like uh, violence in the streets and uh, boogaloo boys and civil war 2.0 and like all that shit coming. It's like, I don't think people are taking into account just how long America can continue to go on if things just continue to get just shittier and shittier, but in a slow drip, yep. drip, drip. And I think the really horrible answer is it's not going to like lead to some violent conflagration or a revolution or anything like that things are just going to get worse bit by bit for everyone little by little but like everything will basically stay the same and like if it, it will be like that for the foreseeable future we're going to be young forever the best part, part partying is partying's <laughs> never going to make us feel bad the best part about all this you and us we can never leave like trump at his base you're with us forever, and we're with you forever. And it's you know it's it's terrible that you know we're la la locked in this stasis point where I I truly really believe like this the second this this Biden term is just going to be like a weird prolongation of election night. It's going to just be like being pulled towards a black hole and spaghettified into one it, one day that lasts four fucking years. Uh, but uh, yeah, the good news is uh, uh, I believe that um, Pornhub. Uh, is getting into the flavored vodka game. So <laughs> pick that up at your local store. Let's all meet up in the year 2000. <laughs> Won't it be good Won't when, be when, it's when we're, we're all fully grown? <laughs> <laughs> be there to I never rock. thought. I never thought that you'd get dementia. <laughs> I'd be still waiting <laughs> down by my own. On the dark and shiny Waukesha County four years ago. Ho, ho. Be there at two o'clock at the fountain down the road. Yeah, we're all just let's all meet up in the year 2000, guys. <laughs> Are you a cocaine socialist? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's uh, I know we're I know we're a little bit under an hour here, but like, I mean, yeah, that's I don't have much more to say about it, about this election. Uh, I got to say, uh, you know, a lot of people after Bernie bit it, a lot of people said about Trapo, oh, you know what? These guys are done now. And I, I didn't never thought that. I thought we all still had something to say, but 
I realize now that what they really meant is they're lo they've lost the, the much they, they've lost their mojo. They're they've lost their ability basically to be smug. And now, thanks to Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, <laughs> the smug party is back on, baby. Maximum smug. Set phasers to smug, sir. Oh, if you guys like the vote face, it's coming back. <laughs> ah. Uh, I mean, I, I guess the other thing I would say is, like, I, I mentioned it earlier, but, like, uh, the way this is shaken out, though, with, like, um, uh, like counting, counting mail-in ballots and shit means that, like, for, like, MAGA America, is, like, th this is never going away either. I mean, like, they are never, ever going to think. Oh, that, no. Like, like this, this is, this is, this is going to be. feel this good again. They can't. They, they, you got you to gotta keep chasing the high and, of this, know, like, permanent state of, of, of agitated, you know, anger and pleasure and sadism. Uh, it's too and, fun. And, and you know what? Like it's you know what? Actually, though, it's probably the best possible outcome for Trump personally. Oh, because, for sure. Oh, yeah. he's so happy because, because he gets like, to I mean, say they stole it and have a plausible case and like, for you know, anyone it, who wants to believe it, and that he doesn't exactly, have to be president exactly. Anymore. And like you know, if he really wanted it, wouldn't he be like on TV more? Wouldn't he be out there like really fucking going for it? Like saying, you know, I mean, I know he's he's tweeting it, and Twitter's for the first time ever censoring his tweets, which you know I think sucks. Let let my man speak. Let my man speak on it. But, um, yeah, no, it's like, cause, like obviously he never wanted to be president. Uh, he was glad no. to, he, like, maybe he felt like a, a second's worth of joy after winning. And the and hamburger like, party. Yeah, and the, and the hamburger party. The hamburger party was one of the best days of his life. Yeah, and, the, and like, and obviously he doesn't want to be the man who lost to Joe Biden, but like he's deeply sick of being president. He wants to, and he now wants to he Biden, doesn't have but to. But now be. he doesn't have In to. In his be. mind, and in his supporters' minds, he is not the guy who lost and to if, Joe Biden. And, and, He's the guy who stole it from him. And if he just goes on to like buy the OA, OAN network and just have that be like the Trump TV network that he's on all the time, that yep. he watches all the time, he he might be like something. I don't certainly not happy. He doesn't feel emotions like that. But I mean, he will be contented in a way that the, the presidency uh, is something that never offered him. You know, I, you know what it's people like, said. I like, really think. Though, I, I'm sorry. I, I really think though, like. It, like when if Biden is finally like if they call it for him and like he is declared the victor of this election, I think like the same doctors that gave Dr gave Trump like the orangutan steroids and like the 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 Spider Man radiation fucking pill or whatever, uh, they need to like they need to like just knock him out, just like just knock him out, sedate him, just like sort of like amnesia drug, and it's just like he sort of wakes up in the White House, sort of like it's like the the prisoner with Patrick McGowan, but it's an island. And it's just like a set. It's a recreated White House and Oval Office where there's staff and there's TV cameras. And it's just like a live stream, like like Big Brother or something. And he can just be president like the Truman Show. And it's You know what? I thought I thought about that, though. I thought, what kind of show is he going to want on Onan? Because obviously the whole point would be for him to be on TV. And it's like, yeah, he could do the thing where he's behind a set desk that looks like the Oval Office or he could do rallies. But I realize there is already a job that exists that would be his dream job. And it is talk show host, like a late night host. Because think about it, like oh, there's right. no there, like there there's a million late night shows and they're all hosted by blobs of soy spouting democratic propaganda all the time. Like and that's that's absolutely hegemonic. You cannot not be a lib and do that shit. Mm. Imagine as counter programming that same time when people are getting into bed, old people are getting into bed to watch their stories. Fucking Trump is in front of a hooting crowd of slathering mega dipshits, and he gets to do a bunch of jokes, riffs. They wouldn't even give him a fucking monologue. He just he just riff about what he yeah, got. He just go. Yeah, yeah. And then what does he get to do? He gets to talk to celebrities. That is such and a good idea, people. Matt. That is. And, and here's the thing and is. Gossip. And here's the thing, as an interviewer and just as a comedian. He's about a thousand times funnier than fucking Fallon uh, or Kimmel. Oh my god! Or, like, the only, <laughs> not comparable, not comparable beings in terms of humor. Just, it's not even close. Yeah, God, that dude, I, Lath of Heaven, are you out there? Are you there, God? It's me, Will. Trump as the host of the Tonight Show would be fucking awesome, and he, like, he, he would, he would enjoy it. It would be perfect for him. I mean, The Apprentice, that was like the best job he's ever had. To go all the way back to Casino. He gets to be Ace Rothstein. Yes. <laughs> Shit, hosting, yes. His shitty, hosting his shitty show. Challenging Joe Biden. Biden. <laughs> he challenges Joe Biden to Joe a Biden. debate. He'll be challenging like Bruce Orr to the debate. <laughs> and I like Bruce, get, Bruce, come in here. Yeah, he'll be challenging Rupert Murdoch. Bruce Orr and like the county commissioner 
who like no, you he'll, know, he'll be yeah. he'll be daring Rupert Murdoch to come on the show and debate him about the his Fox decision desk <laughs> calling Arizona <laughs> right after interviewing Frankie Valley. Oh my God! Yeah, that oh, what a bright future for him. You can ask me anything you want, Rupert. <laughs> 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 I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> Donald Trump was a one-term president of the United States <laughs> and one of the best football handicappers in the world. <laughs> He'll take you inside the real Mar-a-Lago like no one can. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I, I just, I, I love, I love the, I love the, like Casino America. I mean, it, it, oh it's, yeah, it's, that's it's the perfect movie destiny. that just like it just describes like the people coming together to build this gigantic, like sprawling empire of like fucking money and greed, and then like they, them all just fucking destroying it, and it yep. all just come collapsing fucking down. But then the yep. joke is, the casinos are still there, Vegas yep. still is, exists. People are Beautiful more popular ever. than ever. It's wonderful. We love it. This is, we are all Frank Marino. We are all Joe Pesci's kid thinking that we're smart because we know not to put too much butter on the pancake. <laughs> we, are, we are all Frankie Valley being interviewed and saying that it was fun to fuck my wife to create all my kids. We're all those we're all, the, we're all the Vegas Metro PD fucking detective who coaches Little League. And he's like, I got to, you know. American kids out there, you can't be trying to hit a home run every time. You got to do some. Laugh. <laughs> this is this is your life, America. We your did head it. in a vice, just squeezing it, and there's fucking uh, Joey B over your head. Joey going, B, don't make me be a bad guy. Joey B, you made you pop your head out of your fucking head for Joey B. Do this asshole a favor. <laughs> fucking kill me. Nira, is, we are getting married, and Nira is calling us, telling us that she remembers how we looked on the first day she ever saw us when we were fourteen. You're like a wild. Oh my god! You're like a wild cult, Nira. For some ever, do you, do you? Can you hear me? Can you feel me in your in the pit of your stomach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a good country! Yeah, it's, it's, it's the all best. It's I mean, it's, <laughs> we're still number one. You watch one. that movie, you have a good time. <laughs> yeah, well, I love because you know. Uh, man, Casino and America, we're still number one, guys. We're number one. Number one, baby. Number one. Well, yeah. That's it. Um, talk to you guys soon. Oh yeah, soon. in a new, in a new, uh, good America. Yeah, America. Yeah, exactly. We're back. It's to all be- going to be good. <laughs> we're back to being the good country. And you know we're what? Gonna broadcast live. The next episode live from brunch. And you know what? <laughs> uh, 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 Vincent Bevan said it. But at the end of the day. No matter what happens in the future, nothing can ever change the fact that America is the country that elected Donald Trump president. I know. It's amazing. (laughs) It rules. It It rules. Oh, it's so, it's something, man. It's real something. All right, guys. All right. See you. 